Good evening. I hope you can. I'm audible because we've moved these things around. So can you hear me at the back, please? Hi. Uh, today we are all gathered here to celebrate brands and brand achievements. Uh, and in fact, this is a gathering of the finest brand builders in the country. And so before I start, I really do want to congratulate you all on your stellar achievement on managing the best brands that, that are there in India. Way back, uh, also there would be a list of brands that would be published every year. Uh, <clears throat> that would be the list of uh, the best brands, and the only way we'd get to know of them was uh, is that we would read about them in the newspaper the next morning. Uh, an event like this, a function like this, which felicitates people who are behind those brands is, I think, a wonderful idea. And so before I proceed, uh, congratulations to the Economic Time team and the people, Deepak Lamba, Sunita, and Vineet, Bagadia, and others who've made this possible, and maybe a round of applause for them, please. I've been uh, part of the journey of, uh, of a few brands in India, managed a few in Asia, and uh, managing a few globally. Uh, and I've managed brands that were leaders, and have also managed brands that were struggling to make a mark. And uh, from all those experiences, I can say that those who have leader brands to manage sometimes take that for granted. But to have that brand in your portfolio, I think is a unique privilege. It's a privilege which not everybody enjoys. And I can say that in this gathering today, because this is a gathering of people who are managing leadership brands. And I say that it is a privilege, because I think you will all endorse my view that to build a brand to leadership takes not just insightful and purposeful marketing, but it also takes sustained effort and investment over a long period of time. Um, it is, my belief is that it takes roughly about 25 years, or in other words, it takes a generation shift. When a child who is five years becomes 30, that's the time when I believe a brand moves from being a preferred choice to a preferred habit. Unless, of course, you're in technology, where, of course, the cycles are, are shorter. But if you talk of products or brands that are consumed in um, what we will normally call FMCG, I think that's what it takes. So if you, if you have that, uh, I believe it's a privilege. And to manage and build that brand is therefore another privilege. <clears throat> therefore, I believe that above all, brands, just as organizations, if they have to be true for over generations, they too need to have a very clearly articulated purpose, a mission, a reason why they exist. And they need to have a vision, a brand vision, which the managers of those brands deliver consistently over time. Brands, I think, connect with consumers, connect with people at a subliminal level about what they represent, I think, more than about what they do, what function they deliver. You had a session today around this uh, in the morning. Uh, but I think the successful brand owners have defined this more clearly. And at the outset, even before they got down to the positioning statements, to what the tonality of the brand is, before that, they've defined what the brand stands for. And emanating from that is this whole aspect of brand values and brand personality that then manifest themselves in every action of the brand. I've been associated with building brands and managing brands and running organizations with branded business for over three decades now. And I've seen that once you define a purpose which went well beyond functionality and which went well beyond a selling proposition, 
then the brand started to acquire an appeal which can go really beyond any national border, which can go beyond any ethnicity, because it starts to acquire an appeal which is universal in nature. Uh, we launched a few iconic brands, global brands, in an era when the mantra was about localization. There was this big thing about, you know, think global, act local. But this organization that I was with refused to do that. They focused on what the brand stood for, and the belief was that the purpose, the deeper sense of the brand, that is universal. That consumers around the world are no different, that people around the world all aspire for the same thing. There is universality in the basic human need. And if you have a brand which connects with that purpose, then you really don't need to adapt and to change this. And the huge global success of these brands proved that that company was right. Mind you, I'm talking about brand purpose as distinct from the social contribution that a company or a brand will make. So this is not about CSR. This is about the purpose of the brand. In, and, and not for a minute am I saying CSR or the work we do socially is unimportant. But this is about brands that I'm talking. So I'm talking here of the need to have a very clearly articulated purpose that guides all the actions of the brand and around the brand. To some of you, this may all sound very familiar. This may sound something that you do as a second nature every day, uh, especially those who are managing very successful, big consumer-facing brands. They are built around this philosophy. But I've seen this need for anchoring, this anchoring even more strongly in two of my personal experiences that I've been involved in the past. In about the last 15 years, I've actually managed businesses where the category itself is evolving from a commodity nature into a branded nature. Now, these are very challenging interfaces because uh, Really, the two, both the aspects of the commodity and the brand coexist. Uh, in, you know, those of you who've read economics would have read of technological dualism, where the two modes of production are both strong and neither is dominant enough to overtake the other. And that really does happen when you are managing a business which is both a commodity and, and a brand at the same time. The poles of the commodity nature of the category often make the branding exercise seem a bit irrelevant. Truly, immediately a lot of volume can be gained just by knocking a few cents off. But these volumes are really ephemeral. They don't last in the long run. And what does last is the rewards of those who have invested their time in building a deeper and a more meaningful relationship with the consumer. I still remember when cooking oil was dispensed loose in a bottle. Uh, a few packets came into existence and they had a run. But only when there came a brand which started to talk about health did the whole category change. I do not know if, if that company had defined delivering better heart care and longevity as their purpose. But for now, let me assume that they did so. And for now what we are seeing is that that plank has given them the purpose to take that proposition across a lot more and deliver a different business. Whisper, when it was launched in India, defined its purpose to give women freedom and improve the quality of their life. And in a few years of their launch, not only did they overtake the leader, but they built a brand market share position which was close to 50 percent. Uh, I'm currently associated with a brand that has launched a range of staples and the purpose we've defined is to act responsibly. This is then translated into actions like we have partnered with pesticide and fertilizer companies like Bayer, United Phosphorus to spread the whole idea of responsible farming before you get into responsibly sourcing, into partnership with government agencies like Atma, 
it is really getting into being responsible in every action that we have. So we have smaller packs and lesser plastic being used to be responsible to the environment. I started by saying that I've been part of several brand journeys, brands that connect our lives to the purpose. But the real thing is that brands outlive several generations of brand managers. So they get stronger from the contributions that the brand managers make to them in that journey. Today, we have all paused to celebrate the outcome of that journey in a moment that is called the ET Best Brands. Savor the moment and my congratulations to you all on your achievements. May you contribute to be building stronger brands in the future and may you continue to be blessed in your journey. Thank you very much.